What's up, y'all? It's Edward Fox. I'm here with a video, and we're talking about basic things when it comes to finance. Right now, I want to talk about some basic principles of finance. I'm I'm telling you this story because it it, it kind of gets me mad when people out of ignorance make the wrong move financially, and it hurts them long term. I want to see everybody be rich. I want to see everybody have exactly what they want and desire in this life, especially love. And one of the things I've heard, um, I've heard a man say, I think he was telling this to his son, but he, I think he was saying in a conversation to me, him and his son. And he said that without finance, there can be no romance. And it's a thing that I picked on, picked up on earlier in life. Like I was 21. It was like, you know, like basically saying that certain things as a man, you can't have unless you have a certain amount of money. And a lot of it was related to relationships with women that you really care about and love and things like that. And I decided to myself, like, you know what? I'm going to get my finances in a place to where I can just do whatever is a good choice. Like, if I feel like loving on a person and I want to buy them something, guess what? I got the money to do it because I made certain moves financially that are helpful to me and helpful to anybody else I come in contact with. So we're about to talk about a little bit of this right now. These basic finance principles are going to be very helpful to you in your life, in your time. I want you to take this to the bank. I want you to take this to your friends and family. Tell everybody. Um, send somebody my video all that, but let's jump right into it right now. We're going to be talking about basics of finance, finance principles that are not going to hurt you when it comes to making money, growing money, investing money in this society, um, especially in the United States or anywhere around the world, because most of these things are pretty much the same no matter where you go. But right now, I want to talk about net worth. So what is net worth? Your net worth is not linked to your personal worth as a person. Trust me, you're God's child. God love you no matter how much money you got. And that's, that's just how it is. That's that's the facts. So right now we see net worth. I want to look at this right here because it's important. So assets minus liabilities equal net worth. So assets include checking accounts, saving accounts, retirement accounts, real estate, and autos. When it says autos, I mean, I knew you could sell a car, but they depreciate the same day that you buy it. As soon as you drive it off the lot, I mean, this is nine times out of 10. The last year or two, things have changed. In 2021, uh, used car prices went up by 15%, but that's because of a shortage in the chips that people need to go into these cars. The same chips that go into these phones and these laptops, they also go in cars now. So when there's a shortage of the chips, these semiconductors and things like that, the, the price of these cars are going to go up because these chips are needed. So last year was a special case for these cars to not depreciate. You feel what I'm saying? Even though the cars have already depreciated because they're used cars, the price went back up. You feel what I'm saying? And, I, and this is a stock, process, a stock price thing I need you to understand. There's 100%. There's 100 percent. There's 100 pennies in a dollar. Uh, a stock price could go up 80 percent. If if the stock was a, uh, one dollar and it went up 80 percent, now you got a dollar and 80 cent. That's your stock price now because it went up for 80 percent. But if it goes up 300 percent, if the stock was one dollar, now you have three dollars. But guess what? With that same token, if your stock price drops 20 percent. If you had one dollar on the stock and it dropped twenty percent, now your stock is eighty cents. And we're not even talking about inflation just yet, but right now we're talking about assets minus liabilities equals net worth. So assets again, checking accounts, saving accounts, retirement savings, real estate, and autos. Now liabilities are consumer debt, credit card debt. I got credit card debt, but I'm going to get it down. But the thing is, let's say I get some real estate tomorrow. My liabilities, my credit card debt, that let's say it's 10000 in credit card debt. That looks like nothing if I got a house that's worth $225,000.
That means my net worth would be $215,000 $215, because the price or the value of the house is two hundred twenty-five. dollars Minus the liability of credit card debt at ten thousand, that means I have two hundred fifteen thousand dollars in net worth. I need you to think about this. You want to buy things that increase your net worth. This, 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 your assets. You want to be putting money on the assets. You need to be putting money on the assets because the assets are supposed to pay you. And another thing about it, the house is one. The house is just one example. I, I kind of don't want you to buy a house. I want you to buy something that's going to create you more money. And then you use the money that you're getting from the uh, other assets to buy the house because the house is actually a liability. Look at it right here on the right-hand side. We got consumer debt. That's the credit card debt. Personal loans. Let's say um, say you got a loan to do something like student loans. Right there. That's a liability. I have over $33,000 in, in student loans. That's a liability. A big liability, really, because the thing is, if if you die and your student loans are not paid and your parents are alive, they are now made to pay those student loans. You can't even get rid of student loans through bankruptcy. It's a big liability. So consumer debt, we have um, credit card debts, personal loans, we got the student loans, we got the mortgages. People think that houses are amazing investments. It's an amazing investment when you're cash flowing it the right way. There are certain ways to do this. You could get a property, um, and some people will tell you to, to take out a loan on a property just so you can make $200 a month in cash flow. Hell no. Hell no, bro. Hell no. You can really, you can take your computer, learn how to create graphics or do something for somebody and get an extra $200 a month. You could sell water. You can buy a bunch of water bottles and sell them and make $200 a month. No. One of the things I learned from one of my mentors named Grant Cardone, he says the most powerful number in real estate is units. Units. If you take a one uh, a one house, one property, it's a three bedroom, two bathroom house. And let's say you rent out every room. Now you took that one house from being one unit to now being three. Now you got three doors, you got three units. And now it's making even more money, it's cash flowing. That's a real life thing. That's a real life thing, trust me, that's real life. And I've, I've been on both sides of it. I've paid to live in a room in a house and I also run one. So I know what I'm talking about. I see the cash all the time. Today is rent day. Actually, so, but what I'm getting at is you need to be putting your money on assets instead of liabilities. Again, mortgages, you go to the bank to get a mortgage. The mortgage is not an asset. The real estate is an asset that the bank will give you a mortgage on because if you default on that liability, if you default on your mortgage, they get to take the real estate and then sell it again. Now they're given another mortgage to get that property that they can make money on again if you default or if the next person defaults. That's why the asset that you need is the real estate, but you need more units. That's why my mentor, Grant Cardone, is always talking about buying apartment complexes because it's more units. So now another thing we see on assets, it says autos. One of the things that me and my um, my brother Darius were talking about a few days ago is buying tractors, like the semi-trucks. Buy a semi-truck for fifteen dollars to $20,000, a used one, of course. You get that used semi-truck, and he says you can get paid between $1,500 to $3,000 a week. So let's say this. Oh yeah, net worth. We already see net worth. But I want y'all to think about IRR. Internal rate of return. So internal rate of return is how fast do I make my money back? I want to put this in simplest terms for everybody. So if you spend, let's say we let's say we do this. Let's pay, say you spend twenty thousand dollars to get the truck. 
you lease it with the company. They pay you. Let's let's go. Let's go short end. Let's go to low end. Fifteen hundred dollars a week. To use the truck. Let me say use your truck. I want you to future pace this because you can go get 20 bands. You can take out a loan. If you got, if your credit, and, and that's, oh, hell, I, I want to teach y'all the game. Okay, I'm going to show you all the book too that you need to get by this. Um, It's called Buy Then Build by Walker Diebel. Talks about how if you have a six, uh, 680 credit score, you can go to the SBA, the Small Business Administration, to buy a business that is... Like a million dollar business, they'll give you a ninety percent loan on that business. That means you come with a hundred thousand, and they give you the rest of the nine hundred thousand that you need to buy this business. And now you in the game. But also, you can look at doing owner financing with people about buying their businesses or buying their houses, or even buying apartment complexes. But it depends on how you structure the deal. You have to learn the stuff. That's why I be. Buying these books, it's not even my full library. I I got library in my other in the other house. Like trust me, and I got stuff on my phone. I gotta show it to you now. But right now we're still looking at this deal with the truck. You buy this truck that you see all day, every day on the roads. There are trucks out here, and there's people moving things because of the logistics industry. The logistics industry, as of 2021, is over a $1 trillion industry, and it's only growing. By 2025, it's going to be a $1.3 or $1.6 trillion industry. When I say trillion dollars, I mean, let's think about $1. Let's think about $100. Let's think about $1,000. Let's think about $100,000. Let's think about a million. A billion is a million a thousand times. A trillion is a billion a thousand times. It's real money being made in the logistics industry. I got a homie. He's also one of my clients. He's made. Uh, look, I would like you to talk to him about that. But his business is a multi-million dollar business from serving people in the logistics industry. He has a staffing company and the staffing company did over a million dollars in sales or revenue in 2020 and it's only growing they're looking at doing five million this year and they started in 2017 and this is 2022 this is february 8th 2022 and i'm making this but i want you to get the understanding and know that there's lots of money being made in the logistics industry that's what i'm talking about this truck right now because as i'm looking at it that means i need to go get 20 bands let's say i do that this month and i go buy a truck next month i'm like that's some that's what i'm that's what this is a real life case scenario and also, I know people that drive trucks. My mom drives trucks and my godfather. You feel what I'm saying? So I know people that drive these trucks. I got homeboys that drive trucks. My bro Darius. And then one of my other homies drive trucks. I got most of people that drive trucks. So that's why I'm getting this right here. We all see trucks on these roads each and every day. That's why I'm using this use case scenario. That's why I'm using this example right here, right now. Again, let's get back to it. $20,000 to get the truck. It's a used truck. I'm going to put it right here. The used truck. You lease it with the trucking company. They pay you $1,500 a week to use your truck. So now we're doing IRR, internal rate of return. So let's do, let's go to the um, to the calculator. We got $20,000 divided by $1,500. It takes you 13.33 weeks to get your $20,000 back. So let's just say it takes 14 weeks to see profit you feel what i'm saying to see profit this is to see profit so that means i, <laughs> I want y'all to see why people that learn this stuff are going to continually make more money than you because they're going to leverage the same money that you get at your job to go buy an asset so third i mean let's, let's do 14 divided by four because there's let's Let's say four weeks in a month, three point five. Let's say, let's say four months. It's three and a half months. Let me do that. Three point five months to see profit. This is a real life thing. This I just did IRR. This is the internal rate of return. So if I go buy a truck this month in February, that means February, March, April. May, June, 
I mean, in June, I need to go buy another truck. You know what I'm saying? Because three and a half months. So what I'm telling you right now is I want to go ahead and get this 20 bands, go get this truck because I like making money. And the thing is, this $1,500 a week, this asset is being used by another company. This truck can be driving local. Driving, to, I'm in Savannah right now. This could be driving to the port and back. You feel what I'm saying? Every day, somebody, some company, um, let's say Prime. Prime is a company that does uh, trucking. Let's say Prime has uh, somebody, one of, one of somebody you know. If you're in Savannah or you in Atlanta, you know somebody that drives trucks. Really, come on. Let's say somebody that you know is driving a truck I bought and leased to this company, and they're driving back and forth to the port. From Garden City or Port Wentworth back to another warehouse and dropping things off and going back and forth to the port into warehouses. This trucking company will pay me fifteen hundred dollars to three thousand dollars a week for using my truck. This is a real life thing. You feel what I'm saying? This is a real life thing. My homeboy, my, my brother Darius, does it. He gets paid for work like this. So I want you to understand that this is a key. This is a tool. This is something awesome. And the thing is, I don't have to move to do this. That's why it's an asset. I don't have to move. It's an asset. If I if I knew how to drive a truck, if I was driving it, it would be a job. But this right here, without me, this is making money without me. That's a business. That's a systems and processes. That's another person knows how to work this tool for me. You feel what I'm saying? Let's say, let's say I go work at a software company. They buy me a laptop. That's what a lot of these tech companies are doing now. They buying people laptops, they buying people iPhones, stuff like that. But those are tools and means of production that can create uh, assets, create other tools. People are writing code, and these code that they're writing, they building software companies that are getting sold for billions of dollars. Y'all, if you work in business, you might have heard about Mailchimp. Mailchimp is a free tool. It's free. They got ten dollar plan. They got twenty something dollar plans and a three hundred dollars a month plan. But MailChimp just sold last year for over $12 billion because it's software. It is code that people use. And that code that is used to serve so many people is an asset. Now, trucks, these autos, like I just showed you, it's an asset. It can pay you. But this, these are assets, right? These are assets. So let's say this. Assets right here. This is Nerd Wallet. This is a Nerd Wallet um thing right here. Uh, article. Assets include cash such as in your checking, savings, and retirement accounts, and items such as cars, property, and investments that you could sell for cash. These are often referred as liquid assets. They say liquid asset because it's something that you could sell today or you could sell next week and get cash money, and that's what they call liquid. But a house right here, this ain't exactly liquid. I mean, you could get it liquid. Um, but today, if you're talking about a house, this house has equity. You can take a home equity line of credit or you can get a home, um, equity loan and then get access to that equity. And that would be liquid. But if you, this, this house is not liquid until you sell it. You feel what I'm saying? This is not a liquid asset. So now look at, um, now look at liabilities. Any money you owe to another person or entity falls under this category. That includes revolving consumer debts, such as credit card balances, as well as personal, auto, payday, and title loan balances. If you're using your home as an asset, its mortgage counts as a liability as well. Trust me, you want to buy things that are assets. They will pay you. Like I'm like I'm talking about this truck. The truck will pay me while I'm sitting on my behind at the house. I was, I'm sitting on my behind right now. I'm teaching y'all something. I'm making this video to teach you something cool, teach you something great, teach you something that is valuable. And this video can become an asset to me. What you're seeing nowadays on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, people are creating videos like this and they are getting paid for these videos. These videos are becoming assets because the platform, the software that people use on a daily basis is it's attracting traffic. I'm using a tool right now called Loom, right? Loom is allowing me to record my screen and record the webcam at the same time. And this allows me to create these videos that's going to be an asset to me. And people are going to be paying me to learn more information from me from this video. It's 20 minutes so far, but it's straight value in my opinion because what I'm teaching you, what I'm breaking down to you right now about finance, that you will never have to 
you know, unlearn. I need you to see this. I need you to know this because you want to have money. You want to not have to work all the time. You want to be able to spend time with your friends and your family. You want to know that your life is more than what value can you create for a corporation? Because you're God's child. You're not just some tool for somebody to make some money. Like, I need you to know that you are valuable beyond measure. And while you on this earth, while you going through these things, I want you to figure out this stuff to make your life easier. We talk about these basic finance principles. You can even read, even read the Bible in Proverbs and, and, and Ecclesiastes. Probably even, even Deuteronomy talks about how you can make different choices with your work and with your money. Let's let's talk about even with Jesus talking about the man with these talents, the many talents. I need y'all to go read that as well. Some people use their talents. Some people can put money in a certain place and get a return on that money. That's why I'm talking about things about raising your net worth. Buy assets, not liabilities. Liabilities are gonna hurt you. You feel what I'm saying? If you can go get a loan from a bank, let's say you go, let's say I'm gonna tell you straight up, one of my family members, and this hindsight is 2020. I learned certain information. Now I can think back on things I've done in the past or somebody else I know done in the past or a friend or a family member. I'm thinking, oh, in the past, they made a move that exactly is not the best for them. You feel what I'm saying? Or I can look at now, I got another homie that's looking at making a move, getting a loan to pay off some debt. I told him like, no, you use debt to create income because of what I seen a family member do in the past. They use debt. Let's say a family member of mine, they went to, like, they got their credit repair, right? And then they went to Navy Federal and said, hey, I want to go buy a car. Because they found a used car, and it's a nice car. I drove it. It's a nice car. It's cool. But they used the they used a $20,000 loan to go buy the car. The car might have been ten or 11000 and do something else, like pay up some bills with the car. I mean, with the, um, with the rest of the money. Now, with what I see, with what you can do with $20,000, you can... <sighs> Don't let me get my hands on no damn time machine. Whoo! All right. I'm changing every damn thing. Changing every damn thing. Boy. And we ain't going to talk about that. That's a, that's a shoulda, coulda, woulda. All right. I don't do that. So, but now with what I see, with $20,000, you can buy a used truck. And you can lease it with the trucking company and they'll pay you at least $1,500 a week to use your truck. So now let's look at the high end because my brother actually told me they'll pay you between $1,500 to $3,000 a week to use your truck. So let's say $3,000. Let's go back to the calculator. We got $20,000 divided by $3,000. No, no, that's okay. Hit the wrong one. Divided by $3,000. So... Okay, that's a crazy little number. So let's just say this. Say seven weeks to see profit. No, yeah, to see profit, right? Let's say two months. Two months to see profit. Now, there's a lot that goes in between this. Like there's maintenance costs. Um, you have lower maintenance if you're allowing um, the truck to be used at a company that's only working local versus they're um, taking long range trips, maybe going 1,500 miles in a few days. Um, they Maybe they're going to Nebraska or Washington or they're going to Oklahoma or something like that. Or maybe they're driving from Savannah up to New York and then back. Like That's a different type of job. But if you want your truck working local, that means there's less room for certain um, accidents to happen, the towing cost, if there was a problem, the towing cost would be less. Then also you have certain risks mitigated. Like, you know, if you need tires, you know, there's a place um, actually within 18 miles from where your truck is every day that they can get a new tire. You feel what I'm saying? You want to mitigate risk. That's what you do in business because life is risky, but you want to lower the risk. You want to mitigate the risk. That's why people have cases on their phone. That's why people have... um different parameters with how they handle business with how they handle their money and that's what i'm talking about right here and right now you want to use your money for assets liabilities hurt you liabilities take away from you they take away from your net worth and 
that's why I'm making this video because I want you to look at assets, not liabilities. Um, I know people talk about turning an asset into a liability, like buying a, a fancy car to to rent it out. I mean, that's cool. It just don't make as much money as the stuff I'm looking at. You can go buy a business. I want you to look at another thing. Maybe maybe the buying business stuff ain't really what y'all own today. But there's a website, Biz by Sell. It's another business right here. These are businesses that are for sale. 119,450. Okay, another thing. FedEx ground routes. Like logistics industry. So I looked at this the other day. The thing is, the furniture, fixtures, and equipment, that means the vehicles, that's included in buying this business. This is included in buying this business. The gross revenue is $1.2 million. The cash flow is 300000 That means one-fourth of, let's say, 25% revenue, um, not 25% profit margin. One fourth of the business is cash flow. You feel what I'm saying? So if you were to buy a business, you want to look at all the ways that you can increase cash flow. You want to um, decrease um, expenses and things like that. Um, there's certain parts of the business that you can sell off. You can divest. Um, there might be a certain part of the business, like a certain department that's doing okay, but you're like, I don't even want to deal with this. You can divest that part. You can take that department turn it into a separate business and sell it to another business owner that wants to buy a business like that you feel what i'm saying businesses are assets so this i think this is more for consumers but businesses are assets businesses are definitely assets and you want to like buy a business that's one thing oh that's what i got to show y'all so yeah this is a good book right here about building business. Ready, fire, aim. That's a good one. So, Buy Then Build by Walker Diebel. How acquisition entrepreneurs outsmart the startup game. Because I tell you what, starting a business and trying to run it yourself without the experience, or even with the experience, is harder than if you were to go buy a business. You feel what I'm saying? So, that's what I'm talking about today. Buying assets, you need assets because assets increase your net worth and keep you paid. I don't want you having to always think that you always have to move in order to get money. Because the people that have the most money have some of the least movement when it comes to physical. You want to use your mind to make you some money. Like this, like this, what I'm telling you right now, this this could be used as a training. For some people that maybe pay me $7 or $97, this could be used to uh, make a person rethink the, the the actions and thought process and beliefs that they had in the past and now move forward in another way. Because we're looking for assets. we increasing net worth. we getting more relaxed. we putting our time into things we really like. I like lifting weights. I like fighting. I, I, I want to go to the gym more often. You feel what I'm saying? I like stuff like that. Me and my younger brother, we train on stuff like that. My older brother, my other brother, like we lift weights. We we work on our bodies. And you'll have more time to do things like that as you love uh when you have a lot more money. Like I've heard I've heard I heard a stand up comedian talking about it earlier today. He's an Asian guy. He said his dad told him that people go to work doing things that they hate so they can get money to do the things that they love. That's happened for a lot of people. A lot of people suffice. I mean, they 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 suffer and they settle for a life like that. Me, I said I'd rather die than do that. I remember this is this is not even me being vulnerable. It's me being real. I be telling people the truth all the time. Back in 2017, 2018. Now it's 2018, really. But I was working this job at a car dealership at AutoNation. Um and man, I was going through a breakup at the same time and I hated my job. The second day at work, I decided I hated that shit. I was, um, excuse my language, 
But my second day at work, I realized I hated the job. I was working as a porter at the um, at the job. I was driving people um, from dropping off their car at the service department. I was taking one of the company vehicles and taking them to another place, maybe their house, maybe to work. And then I'll go pick them up later on that day and bring them back to the to the um, dealership so they can pick up their car after, it been, after it's been serviced. You know, I was going through a breakup at the time. And I remember, like, crying under one of the desks, like, balled up crying under the desk because one breakup two i hated being there i ended up quitting got another job i was almost working three jobs at one time um i was working at working at um i was working on working at the port i had a job at h and r block and i had a job at that um at the car dealership but the thing is what i want what i want you to know now is having assets can pay you just as much as your job pays you or more without you having to move as much but you will have to think on a different level you have to have different thoughts when i say think on a different level you might now think how many hours do i have to work in order to you know make a certain amount of money or if you're in a service business maybe you get paid maybe eighty dollars to do a certain service it's maybe it's a physical service. I got a homegirl. She's also a client. She's like she like family to me, but she's also a client. Um, she does facials. She does waxes. Um, she does a bunch of stuff. But she has to be in a shop in order for her to make money with that business. It's personal services. But let's say you had info products. Like this, like this video right here, this is an info product. This is information. This is going to help you if you use it. It's an information product that I can now be sold. Let's say I can sell this video for $7 or $97 or $297 because the time is, it's, the time is racking up right now. It's over 32 minutes. This is, this is real life, real deal business money. And this, this can be sold. This one video, this is virtual. Uh, this is memory on a memory card on this phone this can be uploaded to the cloud because it's really getting uploaded to the cloud right now while i'm recording but this is now an asset this video this digital product can be sold thousands of times millions of times for profit every time because it got created one time you want to make assets like that you want to even buy assets like that there are businesses out there that are buying instagram pages businesses that are buying shopify stores businesses that are buying Amazon uh, fulfillment by Amazon stores. You feel what I'm saying? You want to buy assets. And of course, I'm talking about it now. The money that you're making from your job, if you're working, the money that you're making from your side business or the money that you're making from your personal service business, the money that you're making from maybe you do taxes, the money that you're making from um, maybe you create clothing. I want you to take the money that you're making. Look for assets to buy. Please, and if you're using credit, if you're using debt, use that credit and that debt to buy you an asset, to get something that you can leverage to make you more money instead of trading time for money or trading your actual physical access for money. You feel what I'm saying? You want to buy into an asset that can be used by the customer, by the client, by the patient that can make them uh, get the value that they're looking for and then... You uh you get the money from them doing that. You want to sell something that other people want to use and you get paid from it. And this buying this truck was just one example. One example. But I'm thankful that y'all are able to spend time with me and learn about this stuff. Um one of the next things I want to show you is asset class. Asset class. So asset classes. Like this, this is good stuff. We got cash, equity, fixed income, uh, real estate, and commodities. Real estate, um, residential real estate is the largest asset class in the world. Residential real estate. There's over sixteen trillion dollars in people's houses. Like people just having houses, buying houses. It's it's a lot. Residential real estate. Okay. Yeah, I've already looked this up before. It was, it was amazing to see this, actually. Residential real estate is both the world's largest asset class and most families' single largest financial investment. Thus, 
the intersection between big capital and big humanity is a key to understanding this industry. Like, these are things that I'm learning. These are things I'm looking at because it makes a lot of sense to me. It it, it, it makes a lot of sense. This is people's real life. Um, I saw this, I saw this, uh, this information. It was an infographic and it talked about people that have their um, net worth. What is their usual what's what they what do they own and i think i need to pause this how do i pause this video because i want to go find this graphic for y'all and show it to you hold up because i think it's really important that y'all see this how do I, what do i do Loom? come on Loom. hold up But basically, I had to I had to create another video or something about that. But yeah, so I'm thankful that y'all watched this video. I'm here for you. I love you. I care for you, and I want to see you win. But the basic thing of this is get assets, buy assets, use debt to buy assets that can give you cash flow, and sell your liabilities if you can. Get into the right asset class. Definitely residential real estate. Look at commercial real estate as well, which is having apartment complexes or um, you look at buying businesses and definitely buy autos like trucks that can make you money every week on time. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching this and I'm here to see you win.